Hello humans and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. The PlayStation 2, what a great era. Now, Jim Ryan was recently in an interview now that he's retiring. <clears throat> and he was talking about that it actually sold about 160 million. I think they clocked at a 155. You know, that's when they called it when they entered the PlayStation 3 era. But he said they continued selling PlayStation 2s after that. And the real number is closer to 160 or 160 or above. And that got me thinking about what a great time in gaming that was and why it was so great. I want you to think about the variety of games we had back there. What do you remember? And I remember playing a lot of Dynasty Warriors 3. Man, we had, uh, what, uh, The Simpsons, Road Rage, uh, Ratchet and Clank was back then. Devil May Cry. Oh man, I love Devil May Cry. Max Payne was another one. Remember the true crime series? Jeez, uh, what, what, Tekken? I think Tekken 4 was out back then. Uh, the Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, Medal of Honor. Midnight Club. Oh my gosh. The Spider-Man, I think it was Spider-Man 2. Uh, Ace Combat. Oh man. There are so many great games. State of Emergency, I was playing Gauntlet, and it was just lists of games that you can talk about that we enjoyed back then in the variety, right? The scope of games that we got was something that we hadn't seen. Remember, this uh, device had a DVD player also, so you could also uh, use it to watch movies. So you got a double whammy. A lot of husbands, such as myself, are going, hey, we can watch movies on it too when I'm not home. <laughs> and then when you got home, it was all about Call of Duty Finest Hour. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, baby. <laughs> Liberty City Stories. Huh? There were so many great games, but I want to talk about the game development side of it. <clears throat> because... It took a lot less to make a game and the teams are smaller, right? The reason, the reason it was easier to create games back then is because you had smaller teams and it didn't take that much money to make games. Games were a lot shorter than they are these days. It really was an artistic endeavor back then. And that's how you got your Kojimas, that's how you got these type of creators would, that would take a concept and see it all the way through. If they wanted to make a change, they would make it right away. And they were in full control of the situation, right? It was more akin to uh, an artist making an album, right? To what it is now, which is more like a construction project where, you know, AAA companies are managing different teams in different countries, you know? So if you want to make a game, you have to reschedule and, and there's so so much money that is wasted if you don't play if you don't plan things out right or if you have a problem that's how you get all these janky games uncomplete games because making changes within the development sometimes it's just too much money that's what it boils down to it's a problem you didn't have back then and you had a lot more uh, venture capitalists out there wanting to fund these games because you could put in less money and get a bigger reward, right? Your profit margins were higher as an investor. That's not it now. Look at Sony. They're, what, 7%? That's horrible. That is truly horrible. People don't understand how bad that number is, right? Because you could put your, literally, you could put your money in the bank and get a better rate, right? With, you know, maybe some bonds, a little mix with the stock market, and it would be a lot safer. You're not gonna lose money, right? So the, the industry has changed quite a bit. And remember these games that I have in my collection, which I love guys, I love my PlayStation 2 collection. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about Sony taking away my games, <laughs> losing access to them getting my account banned because I have the wrong uh, opinion <laughs> about society or life or what have you. <laughs> it was just a different world and was so creative. The hype was real back then. The hype
hype for the PlayStation 2 was real. It was a machine that was wanted. And as a matter of fact, it was delayed because the PlayStation 1 was doing so well. How do I get mine? I remember I was the operations manager at a company at that point. I couldn't really get out of work. It was one of those jobs where, you know, I was working 60 hours a week. And I just couldn't get away. So I had this uh, acquaintance who wanted to buy a car for me. You know, younger guy. And I said, okay, look, I'll sell you the car, <clears throat> which is a, you know, like a gas saver. It was a little Subaru. If you go stand in line for me at the Best Buy, <laughs> get me the PlayStation and I'll sell you the car. I'll give you a great deal. <clears throat> That's how I got my PlayStation 2. And, uh, man, what is, it was a fun machine, man. Uh, you know, you talk about what, Guitar Hero, you know, and, and so many others. A lot of games that I enjoyed with my kiddos. Because <clears throat> I had that machine for a long time, man. I still have it. It still works. <clears throat> it still runs. A, a great machine all around. And, uh, you know, the, the amount of <clears throat> excuse me, the amount of entertainment that we got for what we put in was just amazing. It, 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 it's a beloved by machine by many gamers out there, but a lot of it had to do with the control that the artists had back then. A lot of it had to do with, had to do with creative freedom. You know, things that are missing in today's market. <clears throat> Excuse me, when we say things are better, were better back then, Sometimes these are the things that we refer to. Now, don't get me wrong. I think we're in the golden era of gaming. But these corporations with these huge budgets don't have the flexibility and the first versatility to put out these diverse games. A lot of it has gone to the indie scene. And when you're talking about indies, they really just don't have the money a lot of times to develop a well-flushed-out game. <clears throat> Back then, you could. Look at all the games that I mentioned, all the different genres, all the different games that are still relevant today. Right? And it has to do with that creative freedom. When you think about those games, you know, you weren't thinking about the characters, you weren't thinking about <laughs> diversity or inclusion, you were just thinking about having fun. And that's probably the, the thing that you shouldn't let any of this uh, take away from you, the video game scene. Video games are still fun. The PlayStation 2 still exists. You can still play it. Right? It was a great system to be celebrated. And it was probably one of the highlights for me, you know, as far as gaming, you know, history. And the time that, that one of the times I had the most fun with video games. What about you guys? What are your memories of the PlayStation 2? Man, I love my PlayStation 2. It's one of my favorite consoles. All right, humans. Thank you for joining me on this morning drive. I really wish you're doing well. Thank you for subscribing your comments, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.